It is Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2024. The 39th edition of the International Women's Day shines brighter in the horizon as the 8th of March approaches. Women here and there have been carrying out activities leading to D-Day. The sixth edition of the Madiba Festival zooms into essence of the Sawa culture and tradition with conferences at the Bonaanja Sigabonjo village in the Nkam division. The traditional ruler Narcissmo Lekombi is one of the resource persons. Plus, Governor Mijiawa Bakari prohibits the exportation of cereals from the far north region as a means to ensure food security for the people in the region. Those are our top stories. I am Ben and Bumagana. This is the 7.30 News. The International Women's Day is less than one week away and women are already plunged into the activities of the week. Today, the Minister of Women's Empowerment and the Family, Professor Marie Therese Abenondwa, led women of different walks of life in a sports walk along some streets in Yaoundé. At the end of the exercises, she encouraged them to maintain the practice for a healthy life. Romion Kenyi was among the women. A favorable climate for a sports walk and women have turned out massively at the Yaoundé 20th May Boulevard. First, preliminary muscle relaxations before takeoff. The women taking part in the sport activity have been drawn from all walks of life. In fact, there is no difference between those from the public and private administrations. They are out to reiterate the importance of women's rights in the society. It's a sign that women should have physical activity to remain in good health so that they can carry out their activities. It is important for us to stay together, to constitute a force so that we can look at the main direction and have the main objectives. The over 5 kilometer sport walk covered in some two hours is part of the 2024 International Women's Day commemorative activities. The D-Day is on March 8. The walk itinerary linked at least eight major junctions and no one seemed tired. The icing on the cake is the wheelchair and tricycle race with the minister handing out trophies to winners. Women of the Circle of Friends of Cameroon Serac were also in a sports walk today. The ass was a five kilometer distance from the Bastos roundabout in Yaoundé to discover the Paku Vita. Aimbile reports that it was a finesse or fine trail with plenty of fresh air and hurdles that made the women to stretch their muscles and boost cardiovascular health. Here is her report. Fired up were the Serac ladies as they converged on the Bastos roundabouts for their sports walk. With them was the director of the Paku Vita and her close aides, who guided the ladies through a 15 minute slow intensity general warm up session, and this to the rhythm of a barn. And before they embarked on the sports walk, which took them to the Paku Vita. <laughs> One filled with people on a fitness regime whom the Serac ladies joined for more stretches and aerobics before entering the fitness trail of the botanical center of the Paco Vita. An amazing environment with fresh air but also plenty of natural and man-made obstacles to promote good health. What we are doing here, we call it fat leg. Fat leg means that we are mostly working the leg and the body so that's what fat legs so we're opening the heart yeah so that the heart should be able to function well and to carry enjoying every little bit of the physical challenge the ladies endured as they climbed descended and climbed again passing over slippery bridges and a captivating scenery it was a good exercise because we did them some reinforcement of the body because it has been long that i've been doing sports so we had to do some little touch on them an exciting five kilometers covered in all by the women with plenty of calories lost to keep fit during before and after March 8. 
And for the women working at the presidency of the republic, today was a moment to receive training on entrepreneurship projects in the domain of green economy to better prepare for their retirement. Alfonso Bongwa attended the booth camp in Kilzok, Murfuana Famba Division, and now shares with us his notes. Far from their piles of files in their offices, the women from the Presidency of the Republic of Cameroon, the Supreme State Audit, the Ministry of Public Contracts, the Public Contracts Regulatory Board and the General Directorate for External Research Pitch Tent at Nkilzok in the Murfu and Afamba Division to build capacity and get set to explore the opportunities presented by the green economy. We come to call to tell them how to create the planification of creation entrepreneurs. You have to call them to pay attention to not destroy the forest. To lead the women how to preserve the environment for the, the next generation, we think that is the purpose of the uh, green economy. And they have clearly understood why this economy should be explored. Women has to be empowered. They have to invest in their life. They have to invest every day because life has many challenges. Whatever what they are facing, they have to work hard because challenges are enough. And if they don't work hard, they won't achieve what they want to achieve. The women also received skills on self-care and mental wellness. This uh, thematic can help some women there to uh, prepare your, uh, her retirement. Leisure activities like intellectual games and sporting activities added spice to the boot camp. And at the Ministry of Finance, the women shut down their spreadsheets to carry out different sporting activities to maintain a healthy spirit in a healthy body. Victor Siga joined them, but this time, pen and paper in hand. Away from their offices, these women of the Ministry of Finance have seized the opportunity of the 39th edition of the International Women's Day to demonstrate the spirit of belonging through these physical activities. Today is the first step of all our activities in the Ministry of Finance. During the week of intellectual activities, visit our sisters in the hospital of Efulan. Through the various exercises, they kept fit. I'm, I'm very excited because uh, it is a very good experience to be together. It is for the health, it is for a, a, social, a, a social relation. To help us throughout our physical and emotional stress that we go, out, go through every day, childbearing, um, taking care of our homes. So sports really have an important and essential place in sports for our free mind, free body, in fact, free life. The aim, they say, is to prevent some disease, but also remove barriers linked to the status of each individual, creating a bond to improve productivity. A competition to test the public speaking capacities of women is on the way in Yaoundé. The Oral Arts and Eloquence Contest is in its fourth edition and is presenting about 27 candidates at the auditorium of the Ministry of Communication in Yaoundé. Solange Awasun reports that the initiative is piloted by the Bito Association. Solange? This inequality is triples, not only her development, but also the development of all those who are around her. The act of public speaking is not the friend of everyone. Many often freeze when granted the opportunity to pass across a message to a crowd in a most concise and digestible way. Young girls and women are not spared from these brackets. Bito is here to reverse and change the narrative. I'm so happy and I know I will work hard and prepare more of victorious. In order to build their leadership skills and be good orators, the candidates from each category, mainly 17 minors, 6 juniors and 4 seniors, were graded based on their level of confidence and speech delivery. We looked at language, body language, there is volume in your voice, so we also look at the voice quality, the posture. The final of the competition will be held at the National Museum on March uh, 16. In each category, only six seniors were retained, four juniors and five minors will compete at the finals. 
The 39th edition of the International Women's Day, as we have said, has officially been launched in the East region with calls for women to get involved in all socio-political and economic sectors for economic empowerment and constructive social change. The East Regional Delegate of Women's Empowerment and the Family, Antoine Kuya, headed the activities, including a sports walk. Details with Pearl Sa. Women of different ages and walks of life came out in their numbers on Friday, March 1st, to launch the 39th edition of the International Women's Day. Throughout a special work led by the East Governor's representative, Claudine Gabiloa, they marched through different streets in the city of Betwa with important messages centered around this year's Women's Day team. He says it's about investing not only financially but in other human resources. He urges the women to get involved in different sectors and activities so they can continue valorizing and using them as examples to young girls. The women were equally schooled on topics like women's rights, entrepreneurship, among others. The investment that we are talking this year is not only financial, it is more of resource, all the resources. It can be human, material, financial, even time management. According to the East Regional Delegation of Women's Empowerment and the Family, this week will be characterized by numerous activities that will center on empowering women and young girls from across the East region. The discussion sometimes among these women after such physical exercises is on their quest for equal opportunities with the men in domains like building construction, technology and leadership positions, both in the military and civilian affairs. Aizingonkum listened to them keenly asked questions and from their answers he edited the following reports the theme of the 39th edition of the international women's day invest in women accelerate progress means different things to different women we have the, the skills we just need the opportunities and the infrastructure to develop our, our potentials but beyond general education this woman believes it is high time the society gives women equal opportunities in technical domains. They should invest in women in the field of technology. For instance, uh, women pilots, drivers of uh, engines, you know, why not ship captains? They should be women. Others want women given more leadership responsibilities in military and civilian affairs. I really love that women should be given the opportunity to lead, to manage, because they have this potential in them that you will never know until you give them such opportunity. So in my opinion, women should not be left behind. We have never seen a woman who is a general, mostly men. So if women are given that opportunity too, we are going to see what is in them. They are going to express themselves and give out what they have. As the grand celebration of the International Women's Day, come March 8, narrows, these women from all walks of life are looking forward to the response from their male counterparts that will accelerate progress for all. Let's leave the women marching uh, along the streets. Let's get to how they manage their homes. Since the increase in the prices of petroleum products in the country, unscrupulous traders and business persons have taken upon themselves to sharply increase the prices of basic commodities, much to the chagrin of housewives and consumers. Trapped in the somewhat helpless situation, consumers are now forced to go beyond their usual budget to meet the needs of their families. Journalism student Sandrine Tani visited some markets in the city of Yaoundé and tells us what she noticed. The cost of foodstuffs in markets in Yaoundé is currently on a speedy rise. The inflation of prices have caused consumers to send their hands deeper into their pockets while some room about the markets looking for the cheapest options. Prices are really high. For example, fish tomato rice the prices have been increased we don't understand why we are not coping so we have to go around the market from shop to shop trying to get the cheapest price to others the increase in petroleum prices is a push factor to this general inflationary tendency many people transport their goods so it has made prices to increase in order, in order to uh, to cover up the expenses that they are incurring in transporting the goods. 
Wholesale buyers perceive that the weight is felt more by household consumers. We can buy foodstuffs and the transport fare will be added to the prices of small stock buyers to get profit. A situation wherein consumers just like sellers call on the government to address so as to reduce or normalize the expensive cost of living in the nation's capital, Yaoundé. Women and housewives are therefore becoming even more resilient and practicing financial management schemes to cope with the escalation in the prices of basic commodities. Isaac Ngonkum visited other markets and did not only notice the skyrocketing prices but witnessed how women are coping with the situation. Here is his report. The goings have gone tough for most housewives in the city of Yaoundé following price hikes of basic commodities. To survive, different methods have been employed. Around my house, I have a small, a little farm. In this little farm, you, I can find cassava, I can farm cocoyam, I can farm, I can have corn. I go from one market to another, looking for where the prices are affordable. That is how I get to buy. This housewife, who chose to talk off camera, says she is buying in bulk thanks to Anjangi savings. She is not alone to opt for this method. I save 1,000 francs every day in a quarter Anjangi. What I get from there permits me to buy a bag of rice and some kilograms of fish for my family. Cultivation of food crops and buying from surrounding villages is not left out. I buy from surrounding villages in order to reduce the cost of living. Indeed, as it is often said, when the goings get tough, only the tough keep going. And obviously, these housewives in the city of Yaoundé have shown proof of resilience, ingenuity and a tough African spirit, an example for others to emulate. Now, to fight against the high cost of living in cities across the country, government is multiplying efforts to lessen the burden on households through the Consumer Product Risk Regulatory Authority, MIRAB, and the organization of the promotional sales. Consumers can now deal directly with suppliers and benefit from a discount. Cynthia Saptala tells us more. The increasing cost of living and price hikes on food commodities has compelled government to multiply efforts to alleviate the financial burden on households. The Consumer Product Supply Regulatory Authority, known by its French acronym MIRAP, is one of such ways through which government has been operating since 2011. We are organizing market every end of the month, three days we have uh, now uh, three markets uh, that are going on in the Yaoundé. The advantage on our market is that uh, we are more cheaper than the classic market, 5 to 20 percent reduction. Through their periodic markets, consumers are able to buy a kilo of meat at 2,700 francs instead of 3,000 francs in the markets. We have stores also in five regions in Cameroon. Producers are coming with their food. We have those stores at uh, Gaoundere, Garoua, Marwa, uh, Ebolova, and the Bertoua. We are going to, to build stores in the, all the, the classic market. Uh, in the in the Yaoundé Fest in Douala on a daily basis from uh, Monday to, to Sunday. A strategy that is being diversified, giving consumers the possibility of trading directly with producers in state organized sales points like those situated at the 20th May Boulevard, the Meg Roundabout and the Kuno Council. Sources from the Ministry of Trade say other efforts made by government include field inspections to ensure that homologated prices of staple foods are being respected. Across Cameroon and around the world, you're watching the 730 News on the CRTV. 
The Director General of the Cameroon Radio Television, Charles Ndongo, has received in audience the Director General of the African Union of Broadcasters, Grego Anjaka. Both men have discussed the preparations ongoing of the Summit on Artificial Intelligence and Media to be hosted by Cameroon in Yaoundé from March 4 to March 6, 2024. Now, here is Gilbert Ongene with details on that audience. African media leaders at the upcoming Yaoundé Summit will be seeking to foster strategic partnerships and most importantly, have the opportunity to dwell on shaping the future of African media by embracing artificial intelligence as a powerful tool for innovation. We had the possibility to see the, the level of preparations of this summit and we are happy to know that we are ready. We are ready to welcome more than 1,500 1, delegates coming from 45 countries. Leading scientists in the field of artificial intelligence will be presenting and debating research findings and their applications within the media on the continent. At the end of this meeting, we will have the declaration of Yaoundé. We will give our point of view on that particular subject because you know artificial intelligence is a good thing but can become also something very bad. All of these and more took central stage in discussions at this audience granted the Director General of the African Union of Broadcasters, Gregoire Njaka, who plied his street at the CRTV for close to three decades some years back and the Director General of the CRTV, Charles Ndungu. Deep into culture, the sixth edition of the Madiba Festival enters full swing in Bona Anja Siga Bonjo, Nkam Division in the Littoral Region, with a scientific conference on the theme Our Resources, a Wealth. A key resource person at the conference was the traditional ruler of the area, His Majesty Narcisse Mwele Kombi, who doubles as the Minister of Sports and Physical Education. Amy Banda reports. The opening of an exhibition of a thousand works and images of sour icons gave a boost to the 2024 edition of the Madiba Festival. Everything about fisheries turn around water and water is an exhaustible source of wealth we must all add value to. They exalted the mysteries of water following a dedicated ritual and collective swimming which was approved by the ancestors. Collective bathing spaces are important for all as much as they keep us away from ill luck. They bring us closer to well and happiness. In collaboration with the Institute of Fisheries, Sciences at the University of Douala, whose aquaculture center is located in Bonanja, the public was informed about the valorization of local fisheries and resources. The Vuri Charlie River is the history of our country. It also occupies a dynamic and economic place of choice. The resurrection of collective memories will wrap curtains Sunday as all will leave after celebrating the values and culture of the Madiba Festival at Bonanja. A Moroccan organization known as Mohammed VI Foundation is offering a scholarship to 40 Cameroonian imams coming from 10 regions of the country. The selection of the candidates is done by a group of learned imams in the country and this took place in the presence of other Muslim dignitaries. For the Muslim communities, imams are expected to be teachers of principles, hence a very strict selection process going on. Maria Tujika reports. The Muhammad VI scholarship, an opportunity for 40 Cameroonians to be trained in advanced Islamic leadership. Ignorance being one of the greatest things that destroys the society in our days. So that is what motivated me to have the zeal to come and write the test in order so that it can be an opportunity for me to enrich myself with knowledge so, that, uh, so as I can you know, change my own self, uh, first of all, and change the society as well. Having good notions in Islam is not sufficient as criteria of selection. The jury is expecting some specific competencies 
from the candidates. History of the Arabic language, because all the exam or the written exam will be in Arabic, so to have a good command as far as the Islamic science is concerned, to memorize a complete Quran. If selected, the candidate will undergo two years of intense training in Morocco. Over 5,000 bags of fertilizers have been donated to women and common initiative groups in Kunki Division, West Region, to boost agricultural production in the area. The benefactor is a CPDM member of parliament, Honorable Albert Quinche, supported by Honorable Colette Soang. Let's get details from Esther Kima. Bags of fertilizers distributed in thousands across council areas for the Kunki Women and farmers groups get the manna, which in the last decade has tremendously increased their yields. From the productive plains of Bayangam to Jebem, Honorable Abel Quinche and Honorable Colette Soing are consistent in their aid to their constituents. The motivation is for, uh, for us, the parliamentary, to give a message to our farmer that we are with them. It's so important that even the head of state say that the soil is rich. The impact has been significant and is expressed as he combs the suburbs from Tese, Tumbo and Petebanjun to ensure the underprivileged benefits. It's a message of gratitude. We are thanking them very much to all what they have been doing for women in Jebem. The donation of the fertilizers to the administrative platform is hailed by the prefect for Kunki, Hari Langwingwanyi, who admits the action of Honorable Albert Quinche is a shining example of a lawmaker interested in the well-being of all strata of the population. The governor of the Far North region has prohibited the exportation of cereals to ensure enough food security in the region. More than 268,000 tons of cereals have been produced to meet the needs of the population, according to officials, and any form of exportation may lead to shortage. Let's hear more from Ayuk John Ashu in Garwa. The updated balance sheet of officials of the Far North Regional Delegation of Agriculture and Rural Development indicates that regular rainfall recorded in the region in 2023 enabled the cultivation of cereals on some 838,766 hectares in the six divisions. Meanwhile, the yields of sorghum, maize, millet and rice harvested last year some up to 1,268,527 tons with an increase of 14% compared to 2022. Important measures have been taken by the FDA state to put at disposal of farmers necessary material. Our harvest had been increased. That's the result. Hence, per the calculations of the National Institute of Statistics, the about 4.8 million inhabitants of the region would depend on some 961,719 tons of cereals within a period of 13 months, whereas there are 86,719 tons of cereals as excess. Based on this, authorities reassure of food security. There is no doubt we have sufficient product to accompany our population, we decide to organize, to not allow people to carry our product abroad. With off-season millet still being harvested, there is enough reason to allay worries of food insecurity. An association of the Balinyonga community in the United States of America has donated two medicalized ambulances to the Balinyonga District Hospital, Mesam Division of the Northwest Region. Hospital officials in the area say the gift is a welcome relief in the provision of health care at a time when the population continues to bear the brunt of the sociopolitical crisis in the region. Aizingongkum completes that story. Life-threatening gunshot wounds, muggings, and various acts of violence are commonplace in Bali, requiring an urgent need for immediate medical assistance on account of the ongoing sociopolitical crisis that continues to have a devastating impact on the northwest region. The Bali District Hospital's director says the medicalized ambulances are welcome relief. So this indeed is going to significantly reduce mortality in Bali Health District. 
and um, it is going to also improve the quality of care to our people. Previously, the medical facility depended on charity to move patients with many instances of preventable deaths. The two ambulances are going to be used to manage and uh, improve on the health services of the Bali population. We had some of our brothers and sisters in this community that we used to call, but because of the crisis, some of them were scared like what would happen to them in the night. The Bali District Hospital is in dire need of electricity and water in constant supply and the infrastructure that is worthy of the appellation District Hospital. And now let's talk sports. Four vs UA lead of Yaoundé have joined Stad Renard of Melong, Cotton Sport of Garoua and Young Sports Academy of Bamenda to be part of the playoffs from Pool B of the MTN Elite One Football Championship. The Yaoundé Base Club picked up a 1-0 victory over Avion Academy of Nkam earlier today at the annex number one of the Yaoundé Omisport Stadium to seal their qualification ticket. Walter Wilson Nana watched the game and brought back these highlights. Mathematically, Fova Azu Elite of Yaoundé is part of the playoffs up of the M10 Elite One League following their 1-0 victory over Avion Academy of Camp at the annex number one of the Yaoundé Obnuswa Stadium on Saturday. Captain Kantin Dani Ngomeni netted the would-be lone goal of the match at the 30th minute of play following a beautiful combination from the midfield to the attacking machinery. This is the delight of coach Aniset Stefan Kuhn and management. We came ready for today's game. We got the three points and we are heading for the playoffs up. We are happy and we'll build up to that. To coach David Ngambe of Avion Academy, they were doomed already for the playoffs down. So they came in the game against Fova Azu Elite of Yaoundé in day 18 and last day of the first phase of the league to prepare the grounds. We came to rehearse for the playoffs down. We know what it is and we are ready. Fova Azu Elite of Yaoundé joins Star Rena of Melon, Cotton Sport of Garoua and Young Sport Academy of Babenda to build up for the playoffs up due in April 2024. We've come to the end of the 7.30 news. At 8.30, Giselle Ongene Manga will be here for the news in the French language. Have a very beautiful weekend. God bless you.